In this tutorial I'll be showing you how to create this ghost trail effect and we'll be going over rotoscoping it, tracking it and applying the actual effect which is the echo effect. First off I want to mention that this works best on footage that is in slow motion such as this clip here. So once you've got your shot selected, go ahead and select the range that you want the effect to apply from. So let's say from here all the way to where he lands. I'm gonna select this area and I'm gonna go ahead and double click the clip and select my roto brush. Now the most important thing when it comes to roto brushing, you want to be as accurate as possible on the very first frame. For example, areas like this, you're going to alt click and make sure we unselect these and normally click just to select an area and basically be as accurate as possible for the very first frame and then let it do its job. Okay, so this took under a minute here to just select everything. Now let's go ahead and play this back. And as you can see, it's done a pretty good job. I believe this is accurate enough for the tutorial's sake, but you can always go in and adjust some of the frames here until you are happy with the rotoscoping. Once you're done, go ahead and click on freeze and wait for this to finish. Okay, now once that is done, you can basically see that it baked the rotoscope onto the clip. And next what I'm gonna do is pre-render this clip with an alpha background. So I'm gonna hit Control M, go into my render settings, make sure it's set to QuickTime, change this to animation, hit OK, and make sure channels is set to RGB plus alpha, which is our transparent background. Go ahead and pre-render this. And once you import it, make sure it's aligned to your clip. Let's go into our main clip here and we can disable the roto brush effect. We don't need it anymore. And now we're gonna track the shot. I'm gonna be using the default camera tracker, but you can use Mocha if you need to, whatever you prefer. Let's go ahead and double click the clip again and select our tracker, go to track motion. And I'm just gonna stick this to something that stands out like this. And let's track forward. Now let's create a new null object and select edit target. Make sure the null is selected, hit OK and apply. And now we've got the tracking data onto this null. So now let's go ahead and start adding the echo effect to create this trail. So let's select the roto clip and add echo to it. We're gonna set this to composite in front. And for now, let's change the number of echoes to 25. And you can already see how we're gonna achieve this effect here by using a bunch of copies from the echo effect. Now we just need to make sure it's tracked to the shot. Now with the roto layer selected, let's add an effect called transform. And we're gonna put it on top of the echo effect, duplicate it and put one under the echo effect. So we basically got these two effects here and the echo effect in between. Now let's hit P to bring up the position keyframes from our tracking data. I'm gonna hold Alt and click on the stopwatch of our anchor point on the transform that's above the echo. And we're gonna link this to our position. And on the bottom transform, I'm gonna Alt click the position here and we'll link this to the same positional keyframes right here. So with these two, we're basically tracking the echo effect into our shot. Now all that's left to do is increase the number of echoes to something pretty crazy. So let's say 500, you should already start seeing some results here. Maybe set the decay to 0.98. The more echoes you set, the more you're gonna get the trail effect. And I believe on my original one, I've set the number of echoes to about 1500 or something, which is pretty crazy and could get heavy on your shot. But this is how you achieve this type of effect. And all I've done in the previous one is add some shake and some color correction. Alright, this is the tutorial. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.